Dr. Freeman, uh, concerning your comments, uh, your non-controversial comments, uh, that there's no place for government in private medicine, uh, what are your views on the uh, regulatory powers of the FDA and the, the work that they're trying to do? <laughs> well, uh, you have a great many heart specialists in this room, I think, or some. I think if you ask them, they will tell you that there are some excellent beta blockers which are available in Great Britain, in Canada, and in the rest of the world, which cannot be sold in this country because of FDA regulation. I have seen estimates from reputable physicians that the availability of those beta blockers would save roughly 10,000 lives a year. I believe the FDA, as it has been operating, has, been, has, has done vastly more harm than good. I have no doubt that it has prevented some bad drugs from coming on the market. But in compensation for this, it has also prevented some very good drugs from coming on the market. It has made the cost of discovering and developing new drugs. It has increased it enormously. It has driven medical research out of this country and into other countries. So I think the FDA has been an unmitigated disaster over the past 20 years. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Warren. Friedman, uh, I think uh, many of us would agree with you about national health insurance, but looking at it from the pragmatic standpoint, what do you think the possibilities are here within the next two years? Of national health insurance? Yes. Well, I don't think they're very good, thank, uh, I'm glad to say. <laughs> but they are not very good for a reason, which is not, uh, unfortunately, a desirable reason. The prospects are not very good simply because of the, infl of the budgetary pressures. The government budget has been rising out of hand, going to be $500 billion estimated for next year. Here we are in the fourth year of an expansion with a deficit of over $50 billion looming. The various national health insurance plans that have been proposed would involve very large expenditures, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 billion dollars. You can get any number you want. As a result, in the immediately foreseeing, uh, in the immediate future, I do not see any prospects of the enactment of national health. Moreover, there is no, in my opinion, there is no widespread public pressure for national health. You know, people are always saying, we, government does these things because of an overwhelming public demand. Nonsense. The demand has to be drummed up and developed the way in which Madison Avenue <laughs> develops a campaign for a new toothpaste. There is no public demand for national health. Of course, everybody would like to have somebody else pay his medical bills for him, but people aren't that foolish, and they recognize that if you have a national health system, they are one way or another going to have to pay the bills. And so I do not believe there is any very great public demand for it. But nonetheless, there is great pressure for it. And the pressure is deriving from various special groups that have special interests to play, including the medical profession. There is pressure on the medical profession because they want to get more money out of it. And instead of there being a principled opposition on the part of the medical profession to the idea of national health insurance, of socialized medicine, let's not call it national health insurance. It's not national health insurance. There's nothing national about it. It's for individual people. There's no health about it because it'll make medical care less good, it'll make the health of the American people worse, and there's no insurance about it because it's simply a, a, government, a government payout. It's simply government subsidization. But uh, uh, there has been, so far as I can see, a diminishing resistance by the medical profession itself against national health insurance, certainly by organized medicine. There are a small number of fringe organizations of physicians that are strongly opposed to national health, national health insurance, to socialized medicine, I'm going to stop using the word, to socialized medicine, and they have been producing material and so on. But it seems to me that it is time, past time, for the profession as a whole to look and, uh, ahead and see what's coming and take much more effective action than they have, not to cooperate with it, not to think that you're going to be able to ride that tiger, you may write it for a time, but sooner or later, you're going to be on the bottom instead of on the top. 
And so, but nonetheless, I think you have a period of time in which to do it because of the budgetary restraints and the pressures of inflation. Yes.